and welcome to TBR's webcast, Take Siri Seriously. My name is Allison Crawford, Market Manager here at Technology Business Research, and I will host for today's session. We are excited to walk you through our opinion of what Siri's impact on technology will be and are looking forward to a lively discussion. I hand this over to Ezra. I'd like to review a few housekeeping items to help get the most out of today's session. We will be recording today's session and posting it to the TBR YouTube channel if you'd like to watch the presentation again or pass it along to your colleagues. As I mentioned, this is an interactive session, so we encourage you to ask us any questions that arise during the webcast. I will be collecting your questions through the session and posting them to Ezra at the end of his presentation. Third, we will send out the slides to everyone registered for today's webcast within 24 hours of the conclusion of the presentation. Now, let's introduce Ezra Gothal, Senior List in our Computing Practice. Prior to coming to TBR to cover PCs, tablets, mobile device strategies, and social networking, Ezra has his PhD in psychology and worked as a software designer, manager, and strategist. The combination of understanding how people think and interact with technology gives a unique insight into the applicability of Siri and what mean for users. Ezra? Thank you, Alice. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Next slide, please. Today, I will show how Siri is a transformative technology. It is, we believe, a significant new user interface that will affect all kinds of technology products. It will make new applications possible and old applications more successful. Like transformations, there will be winners and losers. First, we will talk about how Siri will affect the tech industry. Then, we'll discuss why we believe it is a real breakthrough and just the buzzword of the month. And finally, we'll discuss to the extent we can see it, where we're going to go from here. And with some, some thoughts about what tech vendors might be looking to do. Next slide, please. First, as I said, we're going to look at the effect Siri will have on the tech industry. We will look at the breadth of its impact, what parts of the tech industry it will it will affect. We'll look at specifically the kinds of businesses and kinds of applications it will affect. And finally, we will look at how it will have an effect on businesses and applications. Next slide, please. With regard to the breadth of Siri's impact, it is important to look beyond Siri as it is now. First and most important, it is this is not an Apple-only technology. Siri is just a refinement of technologies that have been out there for quite a while. Bo and Microsoft, for instance, have voice interfaces in their mobile devices today. And there have been many pseudo-natural language problems over the years. I refer to non-Apple implementations as Siri-like interfaces, or LIs for short. Second, it's not just mobile. While there's clearly an advantage to having a voice interface on an otherwise limited device, like a mobile device, we believe that SLIs all have a role on PCs and even on other technology-controlled devices. Finally, we do not believe that Siri is confined to consumer products only. We believe that SLIs will have an effect in business. For instance, I think that SLIs could enhance analytics tools. SLIs hit. And in the mobile space, the most obvious one, they're the most obvious uh, mobile vendors, Google and Microsoft. Mobile devices, for all their strengths, have limited UI tools, and an interface makes them considered more useful. Of course, Apple is uh, up on its mobile competition with Siri, and they're going to have to respond. Second, we believe that Siri enhance an awful lot of software. Now, the category of that software is the one of the fastest growing categories, which is mobile software or apps. But there are other other places, as on PCs, as on enter, as in enterprise software, we believe that Siri can make a contribution. Finally, we believe that anything with a complex interface, something that offers you a lot of choices, can benefit from a SLI kind of interface. Next slide. So we will, as effect, 
the business applications that take advantage of them. Basically, SLIs make applications easier to use, and we'll go into how it happens in just a couple of minutes. When it's easier to use, you use it more often, and more people use it. Also, we believe that applications and technology products in the past have been limited by the UIs, and more people would use them, and more people would use them more often if the user interfaces were better. So, during the UI, barrier makes it practical to use applications that were simply too much effort to use in the past. And these applications, of course, become feasible, fake, and sell. The end result, of course, is for technology companies to make more money, whether it's directly through licensing software, indirectly through hardware, or indirectly through providing a, a venue for advertising revenue. There's more potential revenue coming as a result of what we believe is a broadening of the interface of interfaces available. And in competitive situations, you're going to see companies that uh, move fast and well bridging these SLIs get advantage over companies that move either slowly or not well. So you're going to see some new winners and new losers in the tech business. Next slide. So, in this section, we, we basically asserted that we will have a profound and broad effect on the industry. Now let's see how. First talk about why we think it is important. It's, we believe it's a UI breakthrough. We believe that many apps would become more useful, more popular if they had a better UI. And the effect will be that more applications will be used more often by more people, driving more revenue. Next slide, please. Breakthrough going through the Siri backlash, and it, Siri's getting a lot of criticism. Frankly, a lot of the criticisms are valid. Of course, the first one is there's nothing new about Siri technology, and that's, that's fair. Voice recognition, pseudo-natural language, and controlled vocabularies have been around for a long time. And as I said, both Google and Microsoft have them already on their mobile devices. A lot of things that Siri doesn't do. The thing controls on the iPhone to their level. Limited. Uh, there are holes in its knowledge space. There are things you can say to it that it doesn't understand, and holes in, in its languages. Right now, Siri is only available in a very small number of languages. And even in those languages, it doesn't handle a lot of dialects. And of course, you've heard that it's buggy. We, however, that Siri has put us past the tipping point for this sort of UI. That what can happen now is that the UI can improve and broaden, and that people can better adapt to leveraging the UI to get done what they want to get done. We believe this aspect of the fact that people will get better at it is actually more important than the improvements in the user interface. It's a job of the interface to uh, to the user and bring the user up to speed, and we think that that uh, uh, CLIs will will do this quite well. If the, the interface gives you something back for everything you put into it, if it gives you more power, if it gives you more leverage, if it gives you more ease, you will sustain it. And this is why we think it's important that Apple has given Siri a, a push. First of all, it put it out as a beta, which Apple hates to do. It's all these the cute and humorous responses, which is actually a key to the to to the product plan as well as a key to the marketing plan and marketing the daylights out of it. The end result is this pushes Siri past the tipping point and uh, takes Siri to a success point, which we believe it will, and that in turn will drive SLIs in on other platforms. Next slide, please. I think it's a UI breakthrough. The most, we believe it's the most important since the touchscreen, quite possibly most important since the graphical interface. Siri, SLIs solve a significant user interface problem. The problem of helping user choose from a large number of options. Remember a large number of options. They can remember verbs, which are commands, and, and nouns, which are objects, like files and folders, and adverbs, which are options, how to, how to handle these things. People don't tend to remember them precisely. They tend to remember the concepts. They remember the names and words or spelling 
other words, precisely. Allies take care of that. When you're building a bunch of choices into a traditional user interface, you face a hard trade-off. You can list all the choices or present them in an array, an array of icons sometimes, and that makes it hard to find the one you want. Or you can do the menu or folder approach. You can give a, uh, a, one of a limited number of choices, one set choices made, give another limited number of choices, and so on. The cost there is that it takes several actions to get to what you want, and when you learn where it is, it takes you those several steps each time you want to find it. With, with SMIs, you have the opportunity to learn the interface by you, you, you language, by building step by step and adding to a small base and expanding outward. Like a menuing interface, you don't have the learning tools staying with you. That's what I mean by taking the training wheels off. Once you've learned what you need to say to get something done, you simply say it. And into this, what I believe is its key advantage in, in making uh, choices out of large number of options, um, allies provide the opportunity to do certain simple things simply. We've all uh, used a bunch of different ways of specifying a time and date for appointments and things. We use them on, on websites. We use them in our, our uh, email and, and calendaring programs. And people work long and hard to make them the best they can with the interfaces we have. But they involve several steps. They involve screwing on little wheels or cho choosing from calendars. They take quite a, quite a lot of time. If you can simply say next Tuesday at 2, it's over, it's done with, you're, you're ready to move on. This is an area where, where we think that SOIs offer a great advantage. Next slide, please. The reason we think that lowering this user interface barrier is important is that basically we think technology can be used more, but it's limited by the interfaces. PCs and especially mobile devices can do useful things. They can help you remember, prioritize, stay organized. Had a thousand interruptions. And we handle a lot more with devices than we once did when we had to use lower and more awkward technology. We use them more because we require too much additional effort. Every wipe, every click, every scan of a list of choices carries user cost. I like to think that of the economics of user interface. When the cost gets too high, and it outweighs the benefit, and we don't use it. When we use the app, we don't use it as often. We don't buy the app because we figure we don't want to spend the time to learn and use it, or we even visit the website because using it involves thinking and choosing, and we don't want to do it. Next slide, please. If we lower the cost, the effort cost of using this technology, we will use more of it. If you to make an appointment, we'll do it. If it's easy to tell your mobile device to remind you of something, then we'll do it. If it's easy to refine your query into your analytics database, then we'll do more queries. If it's easier to find and therefore buy something online, or even at a drive through window, you do, do more of that. If tech devices are easy to use, you will use them more and buy more of them, and there will be more revenue into tech vendors. Here a free app that I'm sure someone will build using an SLI. Where did I put it app? When your glasses or put your, your passport into a desk drawer, you will tell your device what you're putting and where, and later on, when you wondered where you put it, you simply ask it where you put it. I, I could not, not find a, a, an application that does that. I think because everyone who thought of it, I'm sure there are plenty of us, we've all faced that moment, so nobody's going to stop, pull out their device, key it in, all that. There is, by the way, a Where Did I Park app. I don't doubt that it will get more use and more popularity when all you have to say is I parked here instead of again designating that through user interface. That's an example of the things that become possible if you lower the user interface cost. Sorting the cost, Siri will increase utilization and adoption, and this will increase their revenues, either through the licensing of apps or indirectly through advertising. Now let's look at what's likely to happen next in this space. 
we will address this near-term future of Syria and its offspring, the SLIs. Clear right now, it's about handsets and handset operating systems. The early days of the PC and the early days of the Internet, things are happening. We believe that SLIs will have on PCs as well as on mobile devices. Big Zap, however, is APIs, which gives power to the great application development community. As I've said, I believe there are a wealth of other potential applications for SLIs. I believe, as I said, that they have a role both in mobile devices and in PCs. So the clearest path is here on mobile devices, and particularly um, handsets, the thing that you always have with you that's always in your pocket. Um, App faces the challenge of finishing Siri. It's got to uh, de it, it's got to expand it to cover more of the interface. It all has to expand it, and probably the most pressing area it has to expand it is, is in languages. Right now, uh, Siri only speaks three dialects of English, German, and French. And when you look at the, the iPhone market, that's not really necessarily driving a whole lot of iPhone sales. Apple clearly wants to grab more of that market. Finally, the other vendors, at this point, talking mainly about Google and, and, and uh, Microsoft, have to catch up, and that's a challenge. We don't believe it's a challenge so much in the technology. They certainly have the voice recognition technology. But we believe it's a challenge in polish and, and completeness, communicating with their users so that, that they uh, get off at a decent satisfaction level. We all believe that... that uh, um, SIs play a role in PCs. Now, clearly, the PCs have much better and broader user interface hardware, and it would be crazy to try to, to use a, a voice-driven interface to do the things that are e much easier with a mouse or key keyboard. However, as we talked about during dates and things like that, there are parts of, of uh, a PC interface where it would be excellent to be able to, to, to talk to your PC and simplify the task of of putting data in or, or refining a query or anything like that. Here, this is in a, a situation where the vendors have to get it right. If you do it wrong, if you try to use an SLI where it shouldn't be used or you don't implement it well, uh, you're going to create more problems than, than you've solved. So this is an area where this is throwing a new variable into the mix on, 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 on P operating system. Clearly we believe that Apple is working on an SLI interface for its PCs. However, we believe guys and the enabling of third-party developers uh, is the heart of the action because, of course, apps are where the heart of the action is on mobile devices. Right now, with Siri uh, confined to to uh, native iPhone apps and a few others. There's many things you do with your device that you can't do via that interface. Uh, so it, it's up to Apple and then the other vendors to enable the, their blood, the, the, the developers who create the apps that drive the traffic and drive the purchasers to their platform to make it possible for them to enable this interface. Now, this is, I believe, a bit more complicated than simply providing an API. For instance, we believe the the actual handling of the language would have to be done by on the vendor's servers, handling both the both the voice uh, recognition and the handling of the of the vocabulary and the grammar. That means that um, the developers have to be given tools with which to specify the appropriate grammar. Now, developers have a certain advantage in that their applications are narrower. Than, than the breadth of what, what you can do with the whole device and its core apps. So they don't have to have as broad a vocabulary. They're still challenged. And actually the smaller developers are going to be challenged. They're going to be challenged, of course, in attempting to translate their apps to other languages. And they're going to be challenged in that probably these development environments are going to differ more from platform to platform, the current application environments, and supporting Will be a, a more of a challenge. The the are now considerably in, in how they they support and attract and and help uh, their developer community. 
be. And we see going forward that how the, this new kind of interface is going to give them a, a, another chance to differentiate. And it may give some of the laggards in this business the opportunity to gain strength by making it easier for developers to develop apps using this, this interface. Excellent. Back to everything else, the kind of the limit. Um, one of the things we see is the need to label, enable users to actually share interface, create aliases, identify commands they want to, to concatenate together like a like macro, and give tools that are both, both simple and powerful with which to make their version of their SLI with the kinds of things they do. Then website. Where, where things like querying and searching, both on e-commerce websites and on content websites and on some other kind of data-intensive websites, would benefit from an SLI. That poses a challenge to third-party vendors who are going to have to provide these, these capabilities and enable them to the websites to be delivered to the users through the browser. I believe that enterprise software is also an opportunity. Enterprise software systems are all extremely powerful, and they often face a barrier in delivering that power to the users, to the less technical end users, who are really the, the high-value targets for enterprise software. So enabling their systems, and I'm thinking some that enable querying uh, would be from SLI. And finally, uh, we have all these uh, so-called smart devices we use that face terrible user interface limitations and would certainly benefit Fit from the ability to simply talk to them and ask them things and tell them things. A vacuum cleaners on that list is a joke, but, but may not so much. So, about the future, as Yogi said, it is difficult to make predictions. We do know that Apple will squeeze everything it can out of Siri, but we all know that the real actions in the developer community. We're coming to a conclusion here. We've discussed these three topics. Siri's effect on the tech business. One, I believe Siri is a big deal. And see is happening in the near future. We believe that Siri is more than just the trend of the month. It is broad and deep and positive for the industry. By lowering the UI barrier, it liberates potential applications and applications. The key, the key for vendors is to use it appropriately. You when it actually empowers the user, when it makes the, the application more accessible. When if it's simply added as a competitive checkpoint, it could easily be a lose. CR is planning a, a survey based study on SLIs and on Siri, which is the one that's out there now. And we invite you to contact contact us about that. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ezra. We've had a few questions come in from the audience. Uh, the lines are still open if anyone has any questions on the commentary that Ezra just talked about. Um, Ezra, the first question we have is, <clears throat> what do you believe is most important in introducing an FLI that is trailing Siri and therefore not as fully featured? I think the key here is setting the user expectations. And I've, in fact, I think this is one of the areas where Apple has as executed as, as well as it might. Um, you're quite comfortable with being told this is the sort of thing you can do with this de this device or this interface or this technology. What they don't want to do is have to guess. And what we're going to be seeing with, with uh, other vendors catching up with Apple is they're going to have to implement in a more limited space. They're going to have to address some small subset of the functionality of their device that they deliver on soonest. And I think they can be quite successful doing this by basically saying, we have SLI enabled, and I think some kind of catchphrase will emerge for that, this part, and you can do this with this command interface, and users will be happy with that. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, the second question we have came in is, uh, can another example of where an SLI would improve a PC application? Sure. Um, in the environment, I'm, I'm getting files all over a large server system pertaining to different companies, to different technologies, to different 
aspects of them, their text files and spreadsheet files and presentation files and all that. I have in the past come up with this is for them and even keyboard shortcuts. But in most cases, um, reading them is time consuming. Reading them is, is, is sometimes painful. Uh, reading them is, is next to worthless. I, and I'm faced with, with clear folder after folder, the same old folders, time and time and time again. I'd love to be able to simply name either a file or a folder and a go to and get there. And the third question that's coming is um, hardware question. Uh, what can hardware vendors do to make their products ready for SLIs? Well, I think that the the key here is is uh, with interfaces that are that have other sources of input, and particularly interfaces that are used in in potentially noisy environments, is is a a good microphone. I mean. Other the PC vendors are now trying to do that, put in microphones that can handle video conferencing and, and don't pick up keyboarding, that can isolate voices, array mics and things like that, I think, will serve well. But the other thing is you, you basically need a way of, of waking up the, the device that's expecting inputs from the mouse and keyboard and say uh, the sounds you hear are actually a command. So some easy-to-access to key near the base of the keyboard would would make you say, now I'm talking to you, and you know, bring up the prompt and give you the feedback. Um, we have a question. Do you see SLIs working well on the TV? If so, what are the key barriers? Well, I think that, I, you know, the, the RIS are, and I think it's probably that, that, that Apple is, uh, that's, that Apple is going with the, the rumored smart TV that Apple is rumored to be bringing out uh, in the coming holiday season, I think that the, that probably the the uh, the interfacing the the body of of information that people want to to control with their TVs, simply controlling the inputs and outputs and volumes and things like that are trivial. The the barrier with with uh, with the TV is carrying the information from the database, what programs are playing at what time, come with the aliases for them, and basically being able to interact not with the device, but the whole system of content behind the device. Um, that kind of thing that Apple will pay attention to, and that's what I think that they're going to be doing. Excellent. Uh, we have time for a couple more questions, if anyone else has them. I'll give you a second or two to type them in, either through the chat function or the Q&A function. We've put together uh, some contact information for Ezra. He is available for any questions you guys may have uh, at the conclusion of the webinar. If you'd like to reach out to him directly, uh, you can follow Ezra on Twitter as well. We thank you very much for taking the time to join us today and look forward to having more conversations with you in the future. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.